Uh, I'm Richard Orton, I'm a photographer for the show, and I was very fortunate to meet the Upshaw family uh, back in the late 80s, and even more fortunate that they allowed me to come out and uh, photograph in their community at will and learn about the community. And uh, the cherry on the cake was when Leota Upshaw, uh, three or four years into the project, stood up in the church on Sunday morning homecoming and claim me as her foster son. So at that point I knew I had it made. And, I, and, and that was really contributed to the obligation that I felt to do this, to do the book and now with John's help to do the show. My name is Marilyn Upshell, also known as Sister Girl. Uh, and my sister and I talk about this all the time now. We didn't appreciate it then, but now as we're older and um, see how life is and what's going on in the world now. We appreciate our heritage. We appreciate the way our parents raised us and the values they instilled in us and um, how to love not only each other but other people. And uh, with uh, things as they are now, Black Lives Matter, uh, I really believe that this is the time when an exhibition like this would be awesome if it wasn't for the pandemic. We could really uh, get it out there and let uh, younger people see history, you know, not only seeing things as they as they marching in the streets, but what 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 happened years before, in, in years past? Uh, how did people live? How did black people live? You know, they only know what they know. You know, they don't know what we went through. Through, but anyway, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. If I had to do it over again, if anybody asked, if you have a choice of being born into a different family, would you choose a different family? My answer would be no, I would not. I wouldn't want to be in any other family but the family that I'm in now. I love my family, and um, I'm just really am very grateful to God for how He has blessed us down through the years. I really, this, why don't you, this is your, your quote here. Why don't you read that? I, I really like that. The fact that our ancestors were able to establish and build a church fresh out of the bonds of slavery, and that we are able to maintain and improve it is a tribute to them, not to us. We are what we are because of what they were made of. Um, no truer words were ever spoken, certainly not by me. It's just all about them. And there just is no us, of course, without them, but it's even deeper than that because uh, when you think about the influence of those brothers who built the community and the church, um, their, their experience is one that's shared by so many other families, um, and we know that. But the, the, the consequences are far ranging, and not because either one of us or any, any particular one of us has had such a great, far-reaching influence on the status of our culture or our, our country, but in little ways we all have, um, and this is true for, for families and, and everyone, in little ways we all impact other people, um, but that is certainly true of our ancestors, perhaps in some ways in more visible ways than, than other families maybe, but no less importantly, no more importantly, but certainly no less importantly than, than the impact that other, other people's parents and grandparents have had on, on our country, on our world. Speaking of parents, here they are, your parents. Uh, I think that's a... Yeah, Mason. Mason, okay. So this is definitely our father. He, he had a great sense of humor. He was very, very intelligent, very bright man, a, a well-read man, considering what he had, uh, the, the obstacles in his way, but he had a good sense of humor, and he was very kind, and that's, um, that's just, that's a blessing, but he was a kind person, and... Well, I have to tell my story here. Okay. <laughs> the first time I met him, like the very first time I went to County Line, Day after Thanksgiving in 1988, I'll never forget. Uh, long story short, I drove my truck and parked it under the big red oak tree there in front of your house. And I had to talk about a cold call. This was a cold call. I had no idea. I never heard of him before. I just, I just heard about him a few minutes before. So I went down, I parked my truck, I got out, I saw him standing off in a hog pen uh, with somebody else. And I went over and I introduced myself. 
told him that, uh, who I was and I was interested in coming out and learning about the community, taking photographs, and would that be okay with him? And to my amazement, he said, I don't see why not. So I saw the parents in front of the uh, school that was in the Upshaw community. I didn't attend, I used to go when I was a kid just to play with uh, you know, little kids who were there, but I wasn't quite old enough. And the older I get, the more I appreciate Caroline and, and the family that we had and have. Um, it just is everything, and I cannot wait. I, I know this, and, I, and it is not morbid for me to say I can't wait to see them all again. Um, when we, as my mother used to sing this song, um, it was a Mahalia Jackson, a Jackson song, and one of the lines was, and it'll be howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. Um, and, and I am just absolutely looking forward to that day. But while we're here, we just, we just want to, uh, to, to, to thank Richard again for helping spread the word about not just our family, because this is not just our family. This is, this is representative of so many families, and not just black Southern American families, but so many families uh, have, have had the same or similar experiences and, and made similar sacrifices. And, instill similar values and we're grateful, we're grateful, we're grateful especially for our family.